Hi, my name is Tom Dick, and I'm a mathematics professor as well as a mathematics advisor for Texas Instruments. This short video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use the TI Inspire to explore Riemann sums, a very important topic in integral calculus. Now to start out with, let's review what a Riemann sum is. Now we're going to be taking a look at Riemann sums of a function over an interval a b using a regular partition. Now what that means is we'll subdivide the interval into equal length subintervals. Each will have length b minus a over n. And what we have here is the Riemann sum we would get by choosing the left endpoint of each interval. Now here's another formulation where the choice has been made of the right endpoint of each subinterval. So my summation would look like this. Notice that when k equals 1, we're at a plus delta x. We, for each point in each subinterval, we evaluate the function at that point and then multiply by the length of the subinterval and add all the results together. The bottom summation, this would be this, what the summation would look like if we picked the midpoint of each of those subintervals. All three okay. of these summations look now pretty similar in structure, and that's to be expected because we used a regular partition as well as a regular choice of point. Now here's a way that we could formulate a summation that covers all three of those Riemann sums. That value p that you see, if it's equal to zero, we get the equivalent of a left endpoint Riemann sum. If p is equal to one, we get the equivalent of a right endpoint Riemann sum, and if p equals 0.5, the equivalent of a midpoint Riemann sum. Now we're going to illustrate the use of this summation with a particular example. In f1 of x, I'm entering 1 over x, a simple function. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of it. Let me move the label over here, a little bit out of the way. And I'm going to use the analyze graph capability of the TI Inspire to show us the integral value between 1 and 2. So I'm choosing a lower limit of integration of 1. Now I'll choose an upper limit of integration 2. Do that right on the graph. And then it's calculated the definite integral. And I can see that that definite integral value is approximately 0 0.693. Now there's another way to think of that integral value because that definite integral is also the same as the definition of the natural log of 2. So I'm going to calculate the natural log of 2 here. Let's get a numerical value. And you can see now we have a little bit more accurate display of 0 0.693147, accurate to six decimal places. Now I'm going to use a summation that I've stored in RSUM for Riemann sum that will take as parameters our lower limit of integration, our upper limit of integration, so 1 and 2, the number of subintervals that I want to subdivide or partition our interval into, and then that choice of point p. So I chose p equals 0 here, and this is giving me a left endpoint Riemann sum. Let's store that away, and since it's a left sum, let's use the variable ls for left sum. Okay, let's do that again, but this time let's do a right endpoint Riemann sum with the same interval and the same number of subintervals. So we'll do r sum of 1, comma 2, 10 subintervals, and this time we'll choose p equals 1, which will give us the right endpoints, and we can see that value. Okay. Now let's try, let's actually store this away in the variable rs for right sum and then we'll calculate one more Riemann sum, this time the midpoint Riemann sum. Okay, so to calculate our midpoint Riemann sum, I'll use my R sum formulation. Let's go ahead and copy it down to save some time typing. We'll just edit that p-value from 1 to 0 0.5 because we want to leave the interval and the number of subintervals the same and there we get a third value. And because the function was decreasing, that is 1 over x, it makes sense that that midpoint values would be in between the left endpoints and the right endpoints. Okay, I'll go ahead and store that in ms for midpoint sum. 
And you might wonder, you know, we can see it makes sense that the midpoint sums between the left sum and the right sum, but is it exactly halfway in between? Well, let's check that out by actually taking the average of the left sum and the right sum. So I'm going to take LS plus RS, divide by 2, and see what kind of result I get. Well, they're close to each other, but they're not ex exactly the same. So this average between the left sum and the right sum is, is a little bit different. Now I'm going to go ahead and store that value also, except I'm going to store it in the variable TS, and that's actually standing for trapezoidal sum. And we're going to explain here in a little bit why that makes sense. Before we do that, let's take a, another look at our comparison value, which is the natural log of 2. And you can see how close both the midpoint sum and the trapezoidal sum, they're both with, within one thousandth of the actual value. Okay, so let me go back to the graph. And here we've got just a single interval here. But what I want to do is make use of the geometry capabilities I have in the graphics screen. And I want to go ahead and connect a couple of points on the graph with a line segment. Okay, so I've cho chosen the segment tool, and I'm connecting the left endpoint on the function graph to the right endpoint. And what that's forming is you can see a trapezoid is formed. Uh, if you do that over each subinterval, that's going to give us exactly the same thing as the trapezoidal sum, because that trapezoid's area is exactly halfway in between the left rectangle area and the left right rectangle area. Okay. Now I'm going to a new page here where I've actually set up a notes page, and there's my R sum in a math box. But what I've done now is let n, the number of subintervals, and p, the choice of point, I've attached those to sliders. So we can vary from left to mid to right endpoints. We can also change the number of subintervals and watch that value change on the fly. Here I'm incrementing the number of subintervals up by 10 at a time. And I'll tell you what, let's take a look at that comparison value again. Remember, we're approximating basically the natural log of 2. So let's get that value where we can see it. And you can see this would be what we've got now is with n, n equals 100 subintervals with the left endpoint. There's midpoint very, very close. And if we look at the right endpoint, there we have another value. That's, a, again, an uh, underestimate. So these sliders are very nice for helping us explore the values of these Riemann sum approximations. Well that winds up this video. If you're interested in other video resources like these, please see education.ti.com.